Welcome to my curriculum story. In this video, I will be reflecting upon my experiences with the visual art curriculum and examining how they relate to specific discourses in art education. I will also focus on key issues and debates regarding the curriculum which affect current perceptions and understanding of art within local, national and global contexts. Firstly, who am I? My name is Stephanie and I'm currently in my first semester of Masters of Teaching Secondary to become a high school visual arts teacher. This is following the completion of a Bachelor's in Visual Art and Design. Defining Discourse The meaning of discourse evolved from philosopher and sociologist Michael Foucault who defined discourses as ways of constituting knowledge together with the social practices forms of subjectivity and power relations which inhere in such knowledges and relations between them. Interpretations of the term discourse have evolved over time, and it is used in an educational context to refer to an approach or social system used to communicate a concept or promote a certain interpretation or opinion. An Introduction to Curriculum Meaning a path or running course, interpretations of curriculum have evolved to be woven into the fabric of global educational systems. The most notable change in the understanding of curriculum has been the shift towards acknowledging what is referred to as the implicit or hidden curriculum. This involves subconscious teaching of moral codes and values which have been increasingly accepted in a progressive move of modern curricula. Curriculum through time, a historical view. Globally, current visual art curriculums are generally more progressive and inclusive of content than they have ever been before. Historically, art education has reflected the trends of the art world, which in turn reflected trends of society at the time. Up until the 1980s, art curricula closely followed the trends of English and American education. Educator Doug Boughton identified three periods in Australian art education directly influenced by international curriculum. First was the hand-eye training phase from late 19th century to World War I, which stressed traditional skills like sewing, technical and architectural drawing skills as a result of the Industrial Revolution. Main discourses from this period would be discipline and technicality. Art was referred to as drawing and gained traction as art after World War I, as education entered the so-called creativity phase. After World War I, there was a general push towards fostering creative expression in the form of a constructivist or student-centred approach, in part as a result of intellectuals such as Sysak, Vygotsky and Kohlberg. Children were encouraged to participate in emotive art activities which broadened preconceived notions of the art world. From the 1960s to the 1980s came the studio discipline period, which introduced alternative media such as sculpture and photography. The promotion of creativity remained throughout this period, but an emphasis on perfectionism and realism was also present. Since then, art education has evolved in some ways, while maintaining elements from these past periods. Art education today is a reflection of art education in the past, both statewide, nationwide and internationally. In relation to current art education in Australia, a prominent discourse evident in conversation, mostly by critics of a national curriculum, is the discourse of uniformity and structure. There is a national curriculum published by ACARA, however, New South Wales does not adhere to it and relies on the NESA 2003 curriculum, then known as BOSDES. Curriculum through time, a contemporary view. Primary art education. The amount of time spent on visual art teaching in primary schools in New South Wales can vary greatly depending on the teacher due to the broad syllabus guidelines. NESA recommends only 6-10% of time to be allocated to teaching creative arts, which includes drama and music, as well as visual arts. This means that primary teachers can dedicate 2-3.5% of time to visual arts while still adhering to recommendations. This statistic represents a discourse of visual arts as lesser or unimportant compared to key learning areas. In order to combat this discourse, teachers could adopt a constructivist pedagogical approach where students can choose areas to focus on during allocated times, as well as utilising creative teaching and thinking. Creative thinking can be utilised in every subject, not just creative arts. For example, diagrams and visual representations of numeracy and literacy skills can be helpful, especially for students who favour visual stimuli to learn. 
kindergarten and year six were the only years where this discourse was not perpetuated for me. The teachers were approachable and passionate about art, actively encouraging students' participation in creative activities. Secondary and tertiary art education. The high school visual art curriculum allows for more choice in mediums and content, but is only compulsory in stage four. I chose to study visual arts every year in high school, and it was my best subject in terms of grades, and it was also the subject I enjoyed the most. Schools differ in their ability to teach certain media, depending on funding and teacher skill levels. Despite attending a private high school in the city, there was only one designated art room, and practical lessons were generally only in the form of drawing or painting. If there were more media choices offered, more students may have been interested in continuing studying visual arts as an elective. Secondary art education was influenced by more traditional pedagogical approaches and traditional content, whereas an emergence of contemporary and discourse of creative expression arose during tertiary education. I connected to my Year 7 to Year 9 visual arts teacher, who was soft-spoken, passionate about art, and very approachable. However, as a new teacher, she struggled to maintain order in the classroom, and students perpetuated the discourse of art as frivolous or unimportant. This impacted negatively on the students who did want to learn. My teacher in the senior years of high school was less approachable and practiced a transmission-based pedagogical approach over a constructivist approach. However, she was helpful, engaging, and demonstrated effective classroom management skills. I believe my pedagogical approach will fall somewhere in the middle. There was much more media choice in my tertiary course and I was introduced to highly emotional, topical and controversial art which was not introduced in previous education but was highly beneficial to my learning. This introduced this discourse prominent in the art world and as a result, art education globally, censorship. Censorship in art often occurs when there is a political or ideological issue that is deemed obscene to react or respond to in the form of art. Censorship has always been a prominent issue in the art world, and artworks that initiate such a hostile response is often postmodern in nature and satirises or parodies an issue. However, I feel that, at least in stage 6, offensive works should be discussed to encourage critical and philosophical thinking in students. Discourses are evident everywhere in art education, from the content itself, to the pedagogical approach, to the student's relationship with art, and the content they learn in the context that they learn it in. As Balbusis explains, discourse is not a passive or benign construct transmitting ideas, opinions, or beliefs. Rather, it is that which grounds knowledge. Analysis of discourses can help us better understand approaches to education in order to conclude their positive or negative attitudes and impact towards art in society. Thank you.